Okay, so even though I've been gone for about a week, I've still been paying attention to the models, and what I've been looking at has honestly been quite disturbing to me. Because number one, what we're looking at with these models is that these models are starting to get way more aggressive as hurricane season is starting to pick up. Which means that we're seeing more models indicating that something's going to happen. It's not happening now, it's probably not going to happen for the next week or so, but we're seeing more long range models de detecting something is going to happen. And I'll show you in just a second, but... Another thing I'm noticing is that the European and GFS models are starting to agree more and more, and if you see two conflicting models starting to agree more and more on a general thing, you're going to have to pay attention to that just to uh, see what's going on, and that's what we're going to do right now. Alright, so this is what we're looking at right here with the GFS right here. This is the 6Z or 1AM GFS model run right here. The 12Z is coming out as we speak. We're going to get to that in a little in a little bit. We're going to be referencing this in the 0Z European model run uh, just for the other part of it. So this is what we're looking at right here. This is what we have for the latest and you can see there's a tropical wave coming out in a couple of days but this is going to be mostly more of a sacrificial lamb for another tropical wave that's potentially going to be coming off the coast of Africa. It should be this mess right here, or at least one of these right here. And as it moves uh, gradually to the west, there are indications here that these models or runs right here are indicating a potentially strong system right here. And this is mid-August at this point, so it shouldn't even be that surprising. This, But this is also about six to seven days out, so that's why the NHC doesn't have anything out right now with no new tropical cyclones expecting in the next five days. That's because uh, we're not seeing really that much happening in the next couple of days. Yes, there's that one wave coming out, but it's going to be mostly sacrificial. And let me show you what I'm talking about, first of all. Because first of all, the dry air, even in this season, it's not been the most favorable, but it is to be expected. The last few seasons, we've seen really good moist air in the deep tropics, and that's why you're seeing these storms earlier. But this year we're seeing the drier, the drier air in parts of the deep tropics, but that doesn't mean necessarily we're going to have a bad uh, hurricane season. It doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be having a very uh, low to even average hurricane season because this um, was kind of like 2019, uh, at least through the first part of August, because there were only two to three system, two to three systems actually going on by this point in time. And then Hurricane Dorian started to emerge as a tropical wave in mid to late August. And then that's when start, things started really getting active. So just because we've only seen three systems so far doesn't mean it's not going to be active. It's just It just means it's going to be a little later in the season. So with that being said, this is what the model run I'm talking about. This is what we're looking at. This is that one sacrificial wave. That dry air is kind of kind of going to really suck it all out. But the next one we're going to have to pay attention to, this one right here. The GFS is already, and the European 2 to some extent, also has something happening at this point. And this isn't just a kind of like one and done thing. And in the European, we will see that because the GFS is starting to pick up a tropical wave right here with potential de development. And if we take a look at the moisture, if we take a look at the winds, it does check out right there. That doesn't mean that development is guaranteed, but that does mean the models are picking up something out here. And we can even go ahead and go to the European just to cross check this at 0Z right here. And this is what we have right here. This is interest, very interesting right here. And if you take a look at this, this is the same run. And the European has significantly more moisture out in the, in the tropics, so plenty of, of moisture for this to continue developing. And this thing is not like a one and done thing. This thing gets all the way uh, about a few hundred miles off the Leeward Islands, Lesser Antilles, before the thing kind of kills it off. And that doesn't mean the storm isn't necessarily there. It's just it's just too early out to really de de depict what's going to be happening. So, yeah, that's essentially what we're looking at. Like, the European and GFS are picking up uh, more increasingly aggressive uh, runs right here. And let's go ahead and refer back to this. We have the 12Z coming in as we speak. And we can even cross-check it with, uh, with that. And this is the first 72 hours. Even still, it's still out there. And it's... Yeah, it still looks, it still checks out pretty well. Now, if we go ahead and go back to the, uh, go back to these, even the 12Z run right here, we had, we were at the 6Z earlier. The 12Z is showing uh, actually even more aggressive model runs than the 6Z is, and you, you'll see what I'm talking about because we're looking at pressures down to 1,001 millibars at this phase, and then we're looking at things really starting to ramp up as they approach the Lesser Antilles, down to 992, potentially a Category One hurricane. 
at this point in a couple of these model runs. Again, this isn't guaranteed or anything, but it should uh, it should show that this is going to be a, an increasingly aggressive run right here. Like, and this has been a trend I've noticing. And then we have this thing, particularly this one right here that has the 989 uh, turning and making landfall at Puerto Rico right here. Which, that's an interesting development considering if we take a look at the 6C from this point. It's just, this thing was out to the, in, this thing was pretty much out here in the Atlantic right here. This is very strong nevertheless. Like, we're going to start seeing very powerful storms. And this thing right here, like, if you're, this is voodoo land as Michael Romali calls it. This is kind of where the whole thing kind of doesn't even, isn't even reliable. This is like 15 days out, but yeah. It should go to show that this thing is starting to ramp up. The conditions are starting to change. In fact, if we take a look at the wind shear map, it's been pretty bad the last few days, but now it's starting to get better. It's, these things ebb and flow as time goes on, but at the same time, the, the Caribbean doesn't look that good for development, but except for this part right here and the deep tropics right here looks pretty good for development as well. So if that pattern continues where it just starts slowly collapsing and the wind shear gets weak enough, and we could see something definitely. Now, for my final uh, for my final thing, do I think there's going to be development in the next uh, week? Yeah, it's possible. We could see some new development in the next week. But at the same time, though, it's unlikely because, like I said, the tropical wave that's coming off in a couple of days, it's going to be kind of the sacrificial lamp for the next wave that's coming off. So, in conclusion, what I am what we're looking at here is that. These mall runs are getting increasingly aggressive, and even though we've only seen three tropical systems this far out in the Atlantic uh, hurricane season, that doesn't mean it's going to be a very passive year. We, everyone still needs to pay attention. Michael Romali, actually, uh, for, in several of their videos, they actually had a, a tropical system impact risk, and everywhere from the Caribbean all the way to the Yucatan Peninsula up to, the, up to Florida is in that whole 9 to 10 a range out there. So if you're in those areas, even if you're in the Gulf Coast, you need to start getting your hurricane preparedness plan uh, ready to, to go just in case something happens. And I will continue to cover it all, all the way. But with that being said, we're going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out. It helps me make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And also, please do me a favor and subscribe to Michael Romali. They do a really good job with their analysis, and I recommend you check out their channel. But with that being said, guys, you have a wonderful day. I will continue to update you guys as the situation progresses, and stay safe.